Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Maharaj. Whenever you're ready, you may take the call over. Hare Krishna. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 4, <laughs> Amsagoyam Prayers, verse number 14. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yasam putpat pitam deha akasam manyu ubanam atma jigya yasa yachet sagunam ativartate. One who inquires into self realization and thus subdues his powerful anger, which awakens suddenly in the body as it falling from the sky transcends the influence of the modes of material nature. One who inquires into self-realization and thus subdues his powerful anger, which awakens suddenly in the body as it falling from the sky, transcends the influence of the modes of material nature. When one becomes angry, he forgets himself and his situation. But if one is able to consider his situation by knowledge, one transcends the influence of the modes of material nature. One is always a servant of lusty desires, greed, anger, illusion, envy, and so forth. But if one obtains sufficient strength and spiritual advancement, one can control them. One of attains such control will always be transcendentally situated, untouched by the modes of material nature. This is only possible when fully engages in the service of the Lord. As the Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita 1426, one engages in full devotion and service, who does not fall down in any circumstance that one transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the spiritual platform. By engaging one in devotional service, the Krishna conscious movement keeps one always transcendental, the anger, greed, lust, envy, and so forth. One must perform devotional service because otherwise one will be victimized by the modes of material nature. From the Gyantimidam Vasya Gyanajana Salaka, Taksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudana Maha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale, Nimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamana. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine Nirasesa Sunyavari Pasyatya Deva Tanya. Vanchakalpa Thiru Vishyatipa Sindhu Deva Chantakitana Mubhavane Yo Vaishnava Yo Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhaktivinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, it's mentioned, especially in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that the mind has six enemies. 
which are also enemies of the soul. Kama, Broda, Loba, Mohan, Mada, and Matsarya. Lust, anger, greed, delusion, pride, and envy. You know, Bhakti Vinodha Kaur gives a nice description. He says, in anger, lust is there. And in greed, lust and anger is there. In illusion, a lust, anger, and greed is there. And in pride, lust, anger, greed, and illusion are there. And in envy, the whole package. So uh, these are considered the enemies of the mind, the enemies, enemies of the soul. And so these are part of the lower uh, energies of the material energy. In other words, they're qualities of passion and ignorance, not so much qualities of goodness, but passion and ignorance. And these motivate people to act in material life. One is motivated by lusty desires. One is forced to take sides because of anger or involved in various types of conflicts because of anger. Greed, because material energy cannot satisfy the living entity. The living entity is always looking for satisfaction through the same thing that gives us this satisfaction, that is the material energy. So people become more and more greedy for material things for sense gratification. Illusion is the bodily concept of life which supports these activities. Pride is the, is the false concept that I'm something other than this material, this pure spirit soul, I'm this material body. And my happiness is based on positioning myself where I can fulfill my desires of lust, anger, greed. And envy is that dissatisfaction that comes when one is in a lesser position than someone else and feels unhappy because of that, or tries to destroy another person in order to bring them down so they can push themselves up. Now these six enemies are considered the enemies of the mind and the enemies of the soul. So these must be destroyed. Here we're hearing about anger. What is the situation? Uh, when the uh, Pachetas were performing austerities by remaining underwater for many thousands of years, um, their austerities were successful. And then when they came out, they saw that the whole world was covered with trees. So feeling unhappy because the world had changed and had been covered with trees, they used their power to burn the trees, the ashes, by the power of their glance. Um, Soma, who is the head of the moon, is known as the moon god. He's also known as Chandra. Um, sees the trees as his children. And the moon can, controls the trees. The trees work under the directions of the moon. And so he was alarmed to see the Pachetas acting in such a angry way towards the trees. But here, he's trying to stop them from using their anger at the trees. And this is a series of statements by Soma and describing how, how anger is explosive. When something falls from the sky, all of a sudden, it appears to come from nowhere. So anger is like that. It can all of, all of a sudden explode and, and it erupt into a whole series of words and actions which are based on destruction. 
anger is of course different degrees of anger but here when anger becomes powerful it turns into war as krishna says in the bhagavad gita um, it is lust only which comes in contact with the material modes of passion and later transformed into anger which is the all-devouring sinful enemy of this world so when lust is not satisfied, it turns into anger. But here, and we understand by Krishna's words, how devastating anger can be. We find ourselves in situations where all of a sudden, anger will explode. And people will do something and say something, but later on they regret. And, but it's too late. There's a story in one of the sub scriptures, many scriptures, where it's a parable to give an illustration of how anger worked. There's one man, he had a son, and the son was very prone to anger all the time. And the son, he tried everything he could to help his son get over the anger, but nothing worked. So he told him, every time you feel angry, take a nail and a hammer and drive that nail into this piece of wood. And so the boy did that. He wanted to get over the anger too. So he followed his father's advice, pounding the nail into this piece of wood. And so then after 35, 35 nails were in the wood, Father said, now take all the nails out. And so dutifully, he took all the nails out. And he said to his son, what do you have left? My son said, we have the holes. So here is an example how anger, even if it's checked, it leaves some residue upon the person who becomes angry. So one has to learn to subdue anger, as it says here, by knowledge. And knowledge will help to um, check the force of anger once it starts to arise. But sometimes we find that it becomes explosive and all of a sudden it's out and it's in a, a very destructive mood so they say anger is the younger brother of material desire as long as we have material desires and as long as those desires remain unfilled unfulfilled we are subject to anger and even when the desires do become fulfilled anger may also arise in the form of unfulfilled happiness that comes from satisfying one's material desires. So everybody in the material world is angry, generally, to some degree. And they may not express it so overtly, but within themselves, there is this tension, this anger, because living in the material world means to be overcome with lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy. So it sits. It sits in the mind. It sits in the senses. It sits in the intelligence, as Krishna explains to Arjun when he explains where this sitting place of lust and anger are found. But here, Prabhupada helps us to understand that there is a way to get over this. Because even great saints and sages sometimes become angry. Of course, in spiritual life, there is what is called righteous anger or transcendental anger, but that is not anger that comes by one, by lust or any of the modes of material nature. That is something different. That is the anger that a devotee may exhibit when they see uh, another devotee being unnecessarily uh, um, exploited or 
harm. That's a different kind of anger, just like Arjuna had a fight on the battlefield. You can't fight unless you you use anger. And so he used anger in the service of the Lord to fight on behalf of Krishna, on behalf of religious principle. But that's not what we're talking about here. I brought that up just to help understand that devotees do have anger, which, which is transcendental. But devotees also find themselves victimized by ordinary material anger. And that may also be caused by unfulfilled desires. So here, knowledge is given some focus, some prominence, that one should reflect when one starts to see anger arising within oneself. One should check it by the power of reflection and also learn how to destroy it by the power of knowledge. But Prabhupada gets right to the point and he makes it clear that without engaging in devotional service, because you see, you'll find there are many, many periodicals, books, and various types of written literature that have been published throughout the history of written literature to deal with things that people don't want or don't know how to control. And anger is one of them. And uh, although there is so many self-help, self-redirect books, which may provide a slight a bit of amelioration of the problem, it doesn't get to the root of the problem. Just like if you are cutting a lawn, you use your lawn mower or your sickle, and you cut the grass that is above the earth. But the roots are not cut, they stay in. And then of course, in due course of time, the grass will dry, go back because the root is still there and get nourishment from the ground. So we still get nourishment from our material desires, especially anger, as long as we don't, as long as we don't engage in devotional service. The devotional service can uproot the root cause of these uh, anarthas, especially here, we're talking about anger. And one learns the process of devotion to Krishna, and one becomes satisfied in devotional service, as Krishna mentioned, satisfaction is the mood of a Vaishnav because they're happy simply to render service to the Lord. They're happy simply to have the opportunity to associate and, ser and serve other Vaishnavas. They become satisfied in that atmosphere. So one has to learn how to practice satisfaction. And that way one can also uh, uh, wax uh, knowledge when the situation uh, provokes the mood of envy or anger. So um, that knowledge comes by way of devotional service. Because here, Prabhupada gets right to the point, you have to, one has to get on the spiritual platform. He quotes this verse from the Bhagavad Gita that on devotional service, then one is free from the modes of material nature. And these uh, qualities that we mentioned are these anarchists, these enemies of the conditioned soul, are situated in the lower modes of material energy, such as passion and ignorance. But when one is situated in goodness and is engaged in devotional service, uh, even though one may experience the feelings of anger, they can check it by knowledge, and they can also easily divert it away where it becomes harmless to both the so-called person that was going to be directed towards and the person who is giving it. But another way that one can check anger is forgiveness. And this is one of the 
uh, Brahminical qualities, it says that of all of the qualities of a Brahmin, one, the Brahmin has to develop forgiveness or learn to forgive others for any transgression that may occur towards them. And therefore, learning how to forgive will derail or diffuse this force of anger, which sometimes, if it's let loose, it can be quite destructive. And one will, one may even kill somebody in this fit of anger because anger clouds the consciousness. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Dayato Visayam Kum Sam Kum Sego Sanga Sanjayate Sandayate Kama Kama Krodha Vijayate Krodha Samavi Bo Mohan Samavi Sri Brahma Sriti Brahma Burina Sa Burina Sa Tamashiti. We quoted this verse in my class yesterday to make a point that by contemplating the objects of the senses, then what will happen is by thinking of sense gratification, all of a sudden one has a desire to fill, fulfill that desire. In other words, one wants to uh, engage in sense gratification. But Gayato Vishayam Pumsan, from that lusty desire, is to enjoy, because it cannot be satisfied, anger arises. When anger arises, then delusion, one becomes bewildered. And then when memory becomes bewildered, intelligence becomes lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. So the idea is that the, the, the aspiring sadhaka should always be very diligent not to entertain uh, sense gratification within the mind. Because if you put it in the mind, then the mind will project it in different ways. And if one tries to check it, it becomes a force of anger. Hare Krishna, are you still there? Yes, yes, Maharaj, I'm here. Okay, you, got you can read the translation. Yes, Maharaj, one second. I'm not able to see it. Yeah. Where is it? I'm having a problem with my computer. It's not coming in a big... Zuleika Mataji, you can read. Yeah. Mataji, please can go ahead. Translation. While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. And from such attachment, lust develops. And from lust, anger arises. Thank Bhavati Samoha, Samohat Smriti Vibrahma, Smriti Brahmshad, Buddhi Nasho, Buddhi Nashat, Pranashyati. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. From anger, complete delusion arises, and from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost, and when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Hare Krishna. So it starts with contemplating the objects of the senses. I know it came. Verses are actually one verse divided into two for the sake of explanation. So Krishna, Krishna is speaking these verses. This is not coming from, well, it's coming directly from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So one has to um, understand that. Um, that in devotional service, one has to seek satisfaction simply by serving the Supreme Lord. And when Krishna is pleased by our devotional service, one transcends the modes of material nature and comes to the spiritual platform, the uh, 
transcendental platform. And the platform then has nothing to do with the material energy. And so um, here you're seeing a very interesting situation with the Prajapas. Prajapas have become very powerful and they have developed by the, because by austerity, one becomes powerful. We see how Dhruva Maharaj, when he performed austerity, he became so powerful uh, that, uh, you know, he could, he could just by withdrawing his breath into the pranayama system, he was able to choke out the, the entire breathing force within the universe by his severe austerities. Harani Kashipu, although he was a demon, performed great austerities and he received so many boons that he could not die in so many different ways from Lord Brahma himself. So austerity brings about opportunities for greater material power. So these Pajetas are so powerful that simply by their glance, they were burning trees into ashes. There was nine of them. And then they, they, the father of the tree, Somadas, came, uh, started to preach to them and try to dissuade them from there. And you'll see what happens as it goes on. And it's, it's quite an interesting particular, it's an interesting pastime, how he pacifies the, the Japas. So uh, one should be very aware that this anger can arise at any time, at any place, even without provocation, it comes. Sometimes one will even think of something within the mind which will cause one to become angry. Although there is no person around or no situation around, simply by the power of the mind, his anger can arise reflecting on some incident and all of a sudden one becomes angry. And sometimes you see that in the, in the world today where people, they're angry about something and it has nothing to do with the situation they're presently in because it, it starts in the mind and the mind is the root cause. Um, Rishabde in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam explains the mind is the root cause of lust, anger, greed, and illusion. So um, the, the solution is to engage in devotional service. When the mind is engaged in devotional service, it transcends the modes of material nature. When the mind is engaged in devotional service, it reflects the soul's nature, and one finds happiness in Krishna alone. In this material world, people are looking for something beautiful. So sometimes they travel long distance to see some beautiful natural scene somewhere. People are looking uh, for somebody famous to be with. So if there was someone famous, then you could go and be with them. You might take that opportunity just to associate with somebody who is famous or someone who is rich. Uh, so or someone who is very powerful as a strength or associate with sadhus who are very renounced. So these are the different qualities that inspire the living entity in material life, lust, not, um, beauty, knowledge, fame, wealth, power, uh, strength, uh, renunciation. All of these things are sought after by everyone in the material world, either in one or many of these. But one is seeking Krishna, they can find beauty in Krishna. Krishna is the most famous because he spoke the Bhagavad Gita more than 5,000 years ago, and it's still popular amongst the world's population still being read, it's still being studied. Krishna is the strongest of the strong because even as a little boy in Vrindavan, with the pinky of his left hand, he lifted a gigantic mountain 
which was 60 miles high and 40 miles around, just with the pinky of his left hand. Krishnaism is the, uh, the most wealthiest because um, he, he owns everything, he controls everything, so he controls all the wealth in the world. He is the richest. When he was living in Dwarka, he had 16,108 palaces. And each palace was uh, uh, practically of the size of a planet itself. It was so big. And Krishna is the most renounced also that um, if he wants to be controlled by another devotee, he uh, gives up his position of supremacy and becomes controlled by the love of his devotee. So he, he renounces everything just to take a subordinate position to his devotee. So he's very renounced also. And of course, he is also uh, um, the most knowledgeable. Yeah. So that is the understanding. He's six and two. Um, Aishwarya, these are called opulences. There's a verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Queen Kunti herself in the third, in the eighth chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and that these qualities are very much desired by the living entity. Uh, with Aishwarya, I can't remember the name, the Sanskrit and the verse, or which particular verse. But this is, everyone is chasing after these particular characteristics. So you're going to look for that verse, okay. Go down the page and I, I can, if I see the Sanskrit, I will be able to tell you. It comes later. You have to start with verse number 25, at least. Mm -hmm. yeah, keep going. Keep going, 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 keep going. Keep going. Yeah, there it is. Go back, go back, go back. Go back, 27, 26. Yeah, Janmai Aishwar Shuti Shibir Ekamana Madapumam Naiva Harta Avida Bhartam Vai Brahma Gibson Agoshan. My Lord, your, your Lordship can easily be approached by only those who are materially exhausted, one who is on the path of progress, trying to improve himself with respectable parentage, great opulence, high education, bodily beauty, and I approach you with such feelings. There's another verse somewhere that also mentions these the same qualities. I think it, it might be further down the page when you see if it's in this chapter. And I don't think so. No, I think that was the that was the main verse for this particular chapter. Yeah. Uh, okay, keep going. Let's see. What Prabhupada mentions um, uh, in another place, which is where his verse is placed, that um, due to one's pious activities in one life, one takes birth in a good situation in the next life. And also reach the benefit of wealth, fame, fortune, beauty, uh, renunciation, knowledge, strength. So this is what the whole world is chasing after. But the devotees don't want any of this. Why? Because they have Krishna. <laughs> when they have Krishna, if the, if if the devotee wants any of these things, and he's engaged in devotional service. Krishna will give them just to satisfy his devotee. Sometimes he does that. If the devotee is fixed in Krishna consciousness, the devotee is not fixed in Krishna consciousness, and Krishna is careful not to give these things because he, he, he doesn't want his devotees to become enamored or absorbed in material things. But sometimes he gives it just to satisfy 
this devotee because he knows the devotee will use it in his service. So, yeah, so you're getting a little bit, um, there's a lot of verses that we can uh, scrutinizingly study about this principle of anger. Uh, one has to give up anger, lust, and greed. Otherwise, in the uh, 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, turn to uh, 16th chapter, verse number 23, Bhagavad Gita where Krishna really gets right to the point. 16th chapter, verse 22. Yes, uh, let's see, let me see. Now go to, I'm sorry, uh, go, go to uh, verse 22, not 22. 22. Or 21, maybe actually it's 21. Yeah, it's 21. Dry Vinya Narakasya Dham, Dwaram Nasana Atmanaha, Kama Krodas Tata Lobas, Tasmane Tam Tayam Sadhguru. There are three gates leading to hell lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give these up, for they lead to the degradation of the soul. The beginning of demonic life is described here. One, two, one tries to satisfy his lust, and when he can't, anger and greed arise. The same man who does not want to glide down to the species with ironic life can give up these three enemies, which can kill the self to such an extent that there will be no possibility of liberation from this material entanglement. And Krishna gets right to the point once you give these three up because they lead to the degradation of the soul. But it's not so easy. Therefore, I want us to engage in devotional service to the Lord. And by the power of one's devotional service, one can gradually reduce the force of these anarchists or enemies of the soul and gradually come to the platform of pure uh, loving devotional service, where anger, greed, lust, or illusion, pride, and envy no longer can even be seen within the character of such. Uh, such a devotee. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for this wonderful class. Nina Mataji, I'm so sorry. I we can't hear you, Mataji. <clears throat> now are you able to hear? Okay. I'm having some technical issues, Maharaj. I'm not able. My computer just died trying to connect from the phone now. Maharaj, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful topic. And thank you so much for addressing the prime issue, I think, at least with me. You know, we have those, we don't know where the anger will come from suddenly. And then we regret like a little hole. Like, you know, you were talking about how you nail it. And then, yeah. So it's so, so important to do regular devotional service so we can channelize the anger and to and not have that anymore. Devotees, should you have any questions relating, please go ahead, unmute yourself. You can also switch on your video so Maharaj can see who is posing the question. Hare Krishna. Um, Shukhakara Prabhuji, you want to go ahead? Yeah. Krishna Maharaj is actually the best of the lotus feet. He could break things before I go Maharaj, in this material world, the lust is the biggest enemy for anybody. Lust. And because when lust doesn't happen, they get angry. If the lift lust happens, they are getting more to do more. So what I'm telling is, we are preaching, but still, devotees also get stuck up. Uh, I have this question. One of my friends, uh, he's in Mumbai, he's initiated devotee. He worked for a multinational company and 
you know, there the his assistants are not wearing some short assistant frocks and all come to the office. And he just got his secretary, and though he knows about the theoretically, we are not to see, but the talk, the touch, so he gets stuck up, and he is not able to tell her to wear sari and come, and uh, he he cannot tell them don't come like that, then you lose the job. So he is getting so to um, also do go go. So the I can I can't really hear what you. If you can speak the same thing a lot slower, I will be able to hear it, but. I'm not able to decipher. Hare Krishna. Uh, say, I'm, I'm just telling about the last, the biggest. Thing. Yeah. Is it audible? Hello, Hare Krishna. Am I audible, Maharaj? Yeah, you have to speak slower because when you speak <laughs> fast, I get lost. I can't distinguish the words. Maharaj, I'm just telling that in the material world, the lust is the biggest enemy. Whether you are a non-devotee or devotee, the lust is the biggest enemy. When the lust doesn't happen, then they get angry that why it didn't happen. And if the lust happens, they get the moha to do more lust. So, in this connection, one of my friends, he is a top finance, the chartered accountant. And in their office, the culture is they will have some personal secretary 24 hours you know, throughout the office time. So the secretary, they wear some short frocks and all, and they come and sit. So he says, I know theoretically I'm not supposed to talk to them, but they have got a culture of sitting and touching. And so he's telling, I'm not going to tell them to wear a tie. So they, they cannot tell. And uh, now you have to resign the job and be very, very 10 lakh rupees per month. So you are stuck in a position that, though I know theoretically, but I'm a human being. No, I am not a body, but when I sit there, I think I am a body. What's the question? So the question is how to come out of this. Whether he has to make devotee or, or leave the job. Prabhu, I think you need to say the question one more time because while you were saying, uh, the video just froze. So just... Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Can I just translate his uh, yeah. question? Uh, um, Prabhu is saying like, you know, lust is the biggest enemy uh, in, you know, progress into Krishna consciousness. So his uh, friend uh, has uh, some colleagues or somebody in the office and the girls they wear shorts and he cannot tell them to not to wear shorts and wear sari and that's his problem. So the question is should he stay in the office or get out? Yeah. So yes. maybe he might lose his job if he say that that's what he's saying. There's so many jobs. You lose one job, you get another one. Yes. So one should have faith in Krishna that I will leave the job. Better, better to wonder. lose your job. Better to lose your job than to lose your Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Thank you for the answer. Thank you, Mother. It's a uh, Nice solution, you know, ready to lose the job. We can get another job, but uh, we cannot lose our Krishna consciousness. That's very true. One more question I have got. One more question. See this uh, uh, Gopi Geet in the Srimad Bhagavan Canto 31st chapter. Verses. So, if you have gone to that, then your lust will go up. They are written in the Bhagavatam. So, a devotee who has completed the 9th chapter, gone to the 10th chapter, if he reads every day the 10th canto, 31st chapter, Tavakatha Amritam Tapta Jeevanam Kavibiri Vita Kalma Saparam Shavana Mangalam Srimadatatam 
So, will that help to get out of all the lusty desires and all? The verse is spoken by the gopis. Ooh. It's in glorification of those persons who sacrifice everything in order to preach Krishna consciousness. Ooh. And these, these, they're glorifying those persons who are very magnanimous. Ooh. So, um, Prabhupada said, if you're reading the, the uh, pastimes of Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan, and your lusty desires are increasing, he says, stop it. Stop reading. So, if you find yourself becoming uh, agitated by hearing Radha and Krishna's pastimes, you're not quite, you're not fit to read these things because they are pure spiritual essence and they have nothing to do with anything material. But in order to enter into such, such moods, one has to purify their consciousness. So just by surreptitiously or automatically jumping to that area, and even if one goes to the first nine cantos, but still is affected by the lower modes, then one is not qualified to read such pastimes. Because they will, okay, they, will, Thank you. they will think these things are material, which they're not. The pure spiritual love. But you can't automatically... Mm. You can't automatically supplant your a, a, a spiritual consciousness on your mind. You have to qualify by the process of bhakti. So we go through the different stages. ruchi, ashakti, bhava, and prema. So if we're on the lower platform of bhakti, we're still on the uh, Anartha Nivriti platform. We will not be able to understand, and we will always misunderstand and relegate Radha and Krishna's pastimes to something a little bit above the material energy, but still, still within the category of boy girl relationship. It's not like that. That's why these things are are meant for the pure devotees. But if you can read and, and you're in the right consciousness, you can become purified simply by that hearing of these transcendental passages. But then again, there's different levels. The nine, the five chapters in the, which you mentioned in the 10th canto, chapter 29 through 34 of the uh, 10th canto, is recommended reading. But you don't want to put, we don't want to pick up books like Ujwala Nilamani, Arupa Goswami, or Jayu Deva's Gita Govinda, which goes into the more sweet and esoteric pastimes of Radha and Krishna. These are, devotees stay away from these things because they're not really necessary. Better to hear about how Krishna kills the demons in Vrindavan. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Jyotir Tapna. Hare Krishna, Koti Koti Dhanavad Pranam at your Lotus Feet Guru Maharaj Ji. My heart is filled with gratitude towards you because I have followed all the instructions and all the teachings that you have given so far. And by your grace, my mother is chanting and now she is not opposing and she is accepting the prasad as well. I'm so grateful to you. I'm really eternally grateful to you. And my question is, 
uh, all this lust, greed, anger, uh, all all these six you know, emotional spirit material emotions are uh, taking birth from ahankara, right? Because uh, the ahankara is the point from where all is getting started. And we are born from ahankara. So it is really impossible for the mind to come or transform from the uh, material platform even though we understand on an intellectual platform from to the spiritual platform. So how actually this transition will happen uh, on means on day to day basis, we are trying to do our, emo, our devotional service. We are trying to cooperate with the devotees. We are trying to develop our knowledge. We are trying to do as much as we can do in spiritual uh, platform, but, this transformation the, seems very you difficult. Have, you want you want to know the fast track, right? How to get how to get you know free from these things really quick. I want a hack, or I want <laughs> I want to okay. know what happens with this ahankara because we are born of ahankara, and it's really impossible to go in the spiritual. Um, your if you listen, I'll give you the package. It's easy. All you have to do is listen to what I'm about to say. I got your question. Now, the answer is very simple, but it requires some effort. And the effort is the process of pure devotional service can remove all of these things. And there are many examples in the history of our Vaishnava culture even within our society today. And there's numerous examples. But you might say from where you feel you are or someone else who is on a lesser level, how can they all how can they move forward fast getting rid of these things? So I'll give you the the answer, which is the fast track answer. Sometimes we say there, there is the fast track in Krishna consciousness. There is, this, there is the gradual process, and then there is the fast track. The fast track is you have to search out pure devotees, and you have to go and do personal service for them. When you serve great souls, great service is done. And that, by their mercy, you can become free from all of these, you know, these anarchists or these bad qualities. Now, two things are there. First, you have to find great souls when they're available. And the second, you have to find ways to serve them. Sometimes they refuse to be served. So that may also be a problem. But that is the fast track. Association with great souls and serve them to please them. And then you'll make fast progress in ridding yourself of these anarchists which come by way of the bodily conception of life, which is the, the feature of the false ego. So uh, if you, I don't know if you just can't do that, then just follow the process of devotional service and it's a gradual process. And we explain how it works in our discussion. But if you're really looking for some special mercy, go to a holy place or go to where great souls are present and find ways to serve them. And if you do humble service, not service, but humble service to these great souls, just like you see Narada Muni. Narada Muni, how did he become such a powerful person? He was, a, he was a son of his maidservant mother who was serving great souls in a hotel during the Chaturmasya period of India, where the great souls don't travel during these four months of the rainy season. They stay in one place and they do their bhajan there. So his mother was 
taking care of him. And her little son, who was Narada Muni, who became Narada Muni in his next life, she was assisting her, his mother. And he said, just once, I took the remnants of these great souls, and simply by taking the remnants of their prashadam, he became fully purified. Just by eating the remnants of a great soul, they're called, it's called maha, maha. That maha, which is maha. Now that's the powerful force of such service to great personalities. And Arda Muni is the example. He was free, even at the young age of five years old, from all material desires, simply by taking the remnants of the great songs. There is another, it's quite a long story, so I won't narrate it, but one greedy, lusty merchant got the remnants of Ramanujacharya's prashadam, and because of that, he also completely changed in consciousness. He became repentant of all his sinful activities, and he became very humble and generous towards others. So um, we cannot overestimate the importance of service to great souls. So, so true, uh, Guru Maharaji. Your question. I am crying for the uh, association every day. I am crying, okay. and this is very a uh, dream. I will pray for Krishna to give this opportunity in this life. Thank you so right. much for your teachings and. If you're I will sincere, follow it. I will try to pray sincere, for it. it if you're sincere, it will happen. I will try my hundred percent. Thank you, you so much. And you, it'll 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 happen. Don't thank me. That it's, there's no need to thank me because I didn't give you anything. Nothing happened yet. But if you take my advice and go along that path, you will see the difference. Yeah, I should be thankful because you have really helped me to help my mother. Uh, we had some uh, uh, some state of um, very hard life. I mean, hard situations we are facing and she is able to come out of it. So I am really grateful to you. I'm really eternally grateful to you. I don't know how to convey it, but this is how I'm... I'm so fallen that I cannot express it. And so please accept it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, but it's all by the mercy of the Divine Grace Shiva Prabhupada who has given us everything that we know. We're simply carrying his message to others. That's it. So he is the well-wisher as he signs his letters. He's the well-wisher of all living entities. Shiva Prabhupada's mercy. Hare Krishna and yours as well. Our, our good fortune is if we can repeat without changing what Shiva Prabhupada has given us. That's our good fortune. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, all glories to Shri Prabhupada and all glories to you, Your Holiness, and all glories to some of the devotees. I have found the pure, pure, pure devotee or pure soul. And I'm asking you now, what can I do? How can I serve it? How can I do for you, service for you. You I are my you, your, your soul. So tell me yeah, what I to do. I already did that. I wrote your letter. I told you everything in the letter. Just read the letter again. Okay. I, my last I must not miss it. It's my last letter to you. Oh, wow. Okay. I have missed it. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yes, sir. I will read uh, it. Thank you. 
We have a some Balaram Prashad had his hand up. Is he still there? Is that yeah? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanupanam. I I raised the hand and lowered the hand earlier. I was my thought was Maharaj. Uh, pretty much everybody in this world is envious because we all we all came to the material world because of the envious to we were envious to Krishna. So that means everyone in this material world is envious. That means we have the whole package of lust, anger, greed, delusion. As you said, everything it's a whole package is there. So, uh, so I was thinking, in spite of coming to devotion service, we are still struggling. That means the entire world has this envy, the nature of envy. Then I don't know if the only hardly only few people can take up this pure devotion service, but rest of them will stay envy forever. Uh, it's really hard to understand that. Well. Mm -hmm. we, we can't say that it's impossible because we have examples of great souls who are free from envy. In fact, I, I had a disciple who I can say was free from envy. Um, he was one of my, he was my best disciple ever. He left the world last year many of my disciples and others know him as Johnny Kena. and he was although he was a brahmachari in the, the ashram in London still everyone always said he is non-envious his quality of concern for the welfare of others was so strong he would sacrifice every, anything just to help every, help others in their spiritual life. So um, he was the well-wisher of everyone because he always worked for the benefit of others. So those who work for the benefit of others, not, dis, not discriminating why this person is qualified to receive mercy and this person is not qualified to receive mercy. No, they don't discriminate. They give their mercy just like the rain gives. When the rain goes, it goes on the land, it goes on the ocean, it goes on the rocks. It goes where it's not needed, but still the rain doesn't discriminate. It goes everywhere. So a magnanimous person would, gives his mercy to anyone and everyone. Because they understand that this is the most, this is what people need. They need Krishna. They need to understand that they can be happy by giving up their attempts to become happy in the material world and taking to Krishna consciousness. So there are many persons like that. And um, I had a personal experience as having a disciple like that. And uh, everyone who knew him from the tests, the yes, he was the well-wisher of everyone. He was the friend of everyone. So we meet people like that. Maybe it's due to their devotional service in their previous lives that they have come again to finish it up. And the case with my disciple, it appears that he had performed devotional service in his previous life, and he was just finishing up a little bit left of his material uh, life, and then now going back home, back to Godhead. So, yeah. Not that it's impossible. If we say it's impossible, then we are... We, we don't understand the power of devotional service. So what I mean to say, Maharaj, is uh, yes, is as you said, it's possible, but the whole world is <laughs> envious. The hardly few people take up this in that way. If the percentage, 
maybe I, you know the whoever are taking this devotion service are very fortunate rest of them we don't know what will be their fate I, in that way i was thinking then shila prabhupada yeah. that's why he came all the way to he, he did but you know i don't know whether we can change the whole world it's not possible no prabhupada also said that but if 10% of the people become krishna consciousness in the world they can help elevate the rest of the world <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. But uh, yeah, you are correct that envy is the root cause of all anarchists. From every envy, everything springs because the living entity falls from the material world because they want to compete with Krishna. And that's a feature of envy. We're trying to compete with Krishna in this material world. He has Radharani and we have our girlfriends. He has his palaces, we have our nice buildings that we live in. He has his uh, he has his wealth and we're always trying to accumulate money to build our bank accounts to make us sell, make us giving us most more prestige in the in the material realm. So yeah, we're always competing with Krishna. I have uh, another connected question, Maharaj, if it is okay for you. <laughs> you quickly changed the subject. <laughs> now, I understand. Now, when, when, since you said the envious nature of Krishna, for um, towards Krishna, the I was thinking, even though we all as a living entities, in the, medi in the spiritual world, where where is this envy come from looking at krishna enjoying we are rebellions basically so even though we are rebellion we still stay in that spiritual world and we are supposed and we are supposed you know somehow rebellion against krishna and then slowly krishna kicks us out from the spiritual world that's how that's what happens is like a rebellion right so I, I was just thinking even though we are in spiritual world we are rebellion, kind of that yeah, rebellious please. nature is there. You, you have the understanding you are part and parcel of Krishna. You have many of the qualities of Krishna in smaller quantity. And one of the qualities of Krishna is that he uh, he uh, is the uh, well wisher um, of every living entity. So we want to be the well-wisher of every living entity. We want to be popular. In the spiritual world, Krishna is the most popular person there. Everyone centers around Krishna. And because, but because Krishna is getting all of the attention, sometimes the living entity starts to think, why can't I get that attention? Why can't I get that position like Krishna is? And so that my mentality, if it develops, it forces one to leave the material world, the spiritual world, and come to the material world. And then you can come and become a little Krishna here. And you can have your Radharani, and you can have your, you know, your Garuda to ride on, which is your Ferrari car. <laughs> so you can imitate Krishna by, in the material world. And thinking that you'll be happy by that imitation. And then it's like it's like little kids. They're building this, uh, they're on the shore of the ocean and they're building this little sand castle. So they work very hard and they make a little sand castle there. The father is encouraging them all, oh, such a nice sand castle. So we build our little empire and then all of a sudden the wave of the material energy comes and washes it away. <laughs> so then the wave of material life will come to the point where it takes everything away from the illusion to the entity in his sandcastle. And he is also gone along with the sandcastle. <laughs> this is material life. So devotees, they're not trying for anything. They're trying to 
They're trying to simply serve Krishna and serve Krishna by serving Krishna as the body. That's all. They're reading books, they're chanting, they're dancing, they're taking prasadam, they're doing various services, and they're happy. But then again, if we want something, we want some power, some position, some distinction, some recognition, then uh, we're again in that competitive mood with the Supreme Lord. So in, and in the material world, everyone is competing with each other. So the competition starts first from Krishna, then, then it expands out that every living entity is competing with each other for the resources of the material world. And therefore you have complete chaos. The living entity is not meant to be the supreme enjoyer, but he's meant to enjoy by serving the supreme enjoyer. There's where his enjoyment resides in serving. So a devotee may also get honored by others, but the devotee doesn't think, oh, this is so nice. Now they recognize me. No, the devotee doesn't. Even if a devotee gets honored, he accepts that honor and passes it on to his spiritual master. And he's thinking, my happiness is not so much getting honored by others or getting respected by others. My happiness is by serving others and making them happy. The devotee looks for that, how to serve. And that, that qualifies us again to, again, we re-enter into the spiritual world. And once we re-enter into the spiritual world, we won't come back to this material world because we already been, uh, we already suffered in this illusion of wanting to become independent of Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, it was. takes some time to get that realization. I know a few days ago we were in understand. There is an understanding and knowing. As for yesterday, one of the devotees were speaking that coming to the point of realization is a million dollar question. That means what is our root cause? Understand why do we need to do this? It will take some. Now, for some time, for some people, it will take a day or years, lifetimes. So, it's the that only by the mercy of the devotees, like Maharaj, like you, at least we are getting some realizations, understandings. Thank you, Maharaj. The devotee will think it doesn't matter how long it takes, but let me let me achieve it. When uh, Mukunda was rejected by Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya said he didn't want to see them for millions of births, Mukunda wasn't unhappy. Initially he was, but then the Lord said he can come and see me after many millions of births. When the Lord said that, Mukunda was happy, thinking, again, I will be in the Lord's association. So the goal of Krishna consciousness is so great and one is willing to do whatever is required to achieve that goal. And it may take one minute, may take one lifetime, may take two lifetimes, doesn't. It, you know, we, we would like to have it, have it happen as quick as possible. But in any case, it doesn't matter. We'll still stay with the process for whatever long it takes. Because it, there's no other achievement to achieve. Yes, my what, what else can you achieve? Everything in this world is subject to the time element. It's all gone. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the time. Sure. Uh, Thank you. All around for that the move.
nice to see you and I look forward to coming into Naperville once again. <laughs> in uh, April, yeah, please come in April. We are that new opening, temple opening in Akshayatritya Day. Do you have a date for the temple opening? Akshayatritya, April. What, what, yeah, what, yeah well, what number day? It's uh, 21st, 22nd, something like that. I'll be there because I'll be in the middle. 19. Okay, Maharaj. April 19, 2021. Yeah. I'm going to be in America at the Easter weekend, which is the, the 7th through the 10th. Mm. I'll be in the U.S. at that time. So. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the right. temple. Hare Krishna Prahlad Anand Prabhu. Thank you very much, Mataji. And Dhanvan Pranam, Chandramoli Swami, and all the Vaishnavas. And Mataji said, Maharaj, I don't have any question, but I have some real uh, realization in my own life that how angry I was and how less angry I am now. I cannot say that I have completely. But one, one point uh, you know, which made me less angry is chastisement by Guruji, you know. I was just at very heavily by Sri Radha Govinda Swami when I was in Africa, you know. And from there, I learned humility so much from him. And of course, it is his uh, Asirwad like that. And it was in the connection with this Rupa Goswami's uh, 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 Bhakti Rasamrita Slok, which says, Kama dinam kati na kati da palita durnidesa te sam jata mai na korona na trupana usanti. Utsre janya tanya Love the Buddhist. <laughs> so that's where my, I got the Buddhi, you know. I, I love the Buddhist. Pharma as a son. And then engaging in the services he had advised me to do was to do book distribution, which I till, you know, continue doing that. And this is really, really helping me in, you know, going down in my animal nature. And uh, another thing which helps me is uh, uh, you know, this these two slokas, they, they helped me so much following the chastisement I received. So this was a little contribution I wanted to put, Mara. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Very well. Yeah. You know, Prabhupada was asked by his disciples, were you ever chastised by your spiritual master? Prabhupada said, yes, I remember that moment very well. <laughs> it was one of the happiest moments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Do you have some more time, Maharaj? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, Kakar Krishna Prabhu, do you have another question? Yeah, yeah. Maharaj, is my voice audible? I want to, I don't know whether my voice is coming or is it? Audible now? It's I can't pick up all your words. I only get some of the words. Okay, Maharaj, in the material world, we are having this gross body and subtle body. So with this gross body, we are having the desire for eating, sleeping, mating, defending, and everything is there because we are with the Panchabuddhas and Jnanendriyas and Karmendriyas. Whereas in the subtle body, in the heavenly planets and all, uh, though they have uh, the desires for lust and everything, but still they know that Krishna is the Supreme Lord and they are servant. They, they never want to lord over the whole thing. So to get out of this material body and go to the subtle body and finally come to the pure platform where we have no gross and no subtle body and there we have no lust, no anger, nothing. We are always in the serving mood. So this gradual process of moving out of this gross body, when people die, they get again another gross body and again the subtle body keeps continuing. Is that only the chanting, incessant chanting and serving the lotus feet of Guru Gauranga and selflessly and uh, no aparats will it take us out of the, both the bodies, gross body and material body, uh, subtle body? Yeah, the uh, Krishna says in the, uh, not, not Krishna, I'm sorry, Sutta Goswami says in the 
By serving great souls, great service is done. And by such service, one gets an affinity. They hear the message of Krishna. Srinvata Svakata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha Vedanto Yabhadrani Vidhunoti Suhit Sitam. By by engaging and hearing the glories of the Lord, one develops an attraction for those glories. And then when that attraction develops, Krishna within the heart starts to purify the heart. By his mercy, the devotee makes advancement in spiritual life, simply developing his taste for hearing. So hearing about the glories of the Lord comes from service to the great souls. And then Nasta Prayeshu Abhadresha Nitya Bhagavata Sevaya Bhakti Uta Vasloki Bhakti Bhavati Nice to keep. By regular attendance of the Srimad Bhagavatam and by service to the pure devotee, all which is inauspicious to the heart is practically destroyed. Loving service unto the transcendent Lord is established as an irrevocable flag. Irrevocable flag. And then it goes on verse after verse, coming to the point where a devotee comes. To the stage of pure, pure unalloyed goodness, where lust, anger, greed is no longer present, starts with and develops upon service to great souls, and then it expands itself in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So that's the process. So um, serve your spiritual master completely with all devotion, with all attention, with all strictness. And that will open up the door to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. One will develop in a strong attraction to not just the philosophical aspect of Krishna consciousness, but the, the leelas, the leelas of Krishna, Krishna and Vrindavan in his mood of loving exchange with his pure devotees, such as the gopis, such as the cowherd boys, such as his mother and father, such as the, the environment. These, these leelas of Krishna charm the heart and awake, awaken attraction for Krishna. So when attraction for Krishna starts to awaken, it becomes stronger and stronger. And then one loses attraction for everything in this material world. And as that, as that develops, then one starts to develop supreme attract, attachment to Krishna. One cannot live without thinking about Krishna in some form or another. And as that develops, one comes to the stage of affection for Krishna. As that affectionate stage develops, it turns into different moods of expression in one's devotional service. And one starts to understand the relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world, one will adopt a particular mood of service according to that, that realization of one's identity in the spiritual world. And gradually one will progress into their siddhadeva or their pure state of loving service as they do in the spiritual world. When that becomes perfect, then one, becomes, one goes back home, back to Godhead automatically. Thank you very much, Lara. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All good. Shashira Baba. All glory to you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much for your nectarian class, Maharaj. Thank you so much for coming on the call. Thank you. We'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Thank you. To the Prabhupada. Kijai. Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Kendra Moli Swami Maharaj Kijai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.